Today we're going to take an old water pump from a car and turn it into a drill power water pump. Check this out. You ready, Ginger? Let's do it. So here we have water pumps typical on front wheel drive cars or pretty much any car these days. Um, two different styles. One, the fluid intake comes from here. The other one, it comes from here. And I'm gonna modify them so you can actually use this as kind of like a sump pump or fluid transfer pump that just runs off of a drill. Pretty basic, pretty easy. It's gonna take a little bit of fabrication, but I thought I'd bring you guys along for a why the heck not project and see what we can turn this junk into. So this right here is actually a brand new water pump um, for a 91 to 99 Nissan 1.6 liter um, that I got at some auction. It's just part of one of the random things on the shelf that I have no need for. Looked them up online. I think this one sells for about, you can get this as cheap as $14 shipped to your door. So pretty dang cheap, even brand new. This one right here, if you follow me on Instagram, I just barely did this water pump on a 2003 Suzuki um, area or something like that. Some little two liter thing. I think Chevy uses the same engine. Um, this one did not leak, but it had a wobble to the front pulley, which shouldn't matter in our situation because I don't really care if it has a wobble. I just cared that it would leak. So it wasn't leaking, but it was wobbling and throwing the belt. So I think I'm going to use this one. This one right here, these are both the exact same style of pump. This one right here, though, the fluid is pulled um, through here. So this. Um, pump is actually kind of put on backwards compared to this one. So it pulls fluid in here and we'll push it around and push it out this direction. This one would pull fluid, instead of pulling it from this way, it would pull it directly down to the center of here and throw it out through this path and directly out here. I think this one would be a little bit easier to modify, but this one would be easy as well. This one right here, the suction would be on the bottom. So if I had this I could have the drill on top and I could just stick this down in a bucket of water, maybe even oil, something else. We're going to test it out. Um, I'm going to use this one though. I don't know why. So it looks like this protrudes about an inch, uh, maybe a little bit more. Uh, there's actually some rubbing on here. This one, because it was wobbling, was actually rubbing on the inside housing. Um, but I think that we need to build it up about an inch. So what I need to do is actually take well, if we can take the gasket, which actually fits, you know, just like we need it one way or the other. Boom. And we can cut out. The outside doesn't really matter at all. So we don't need to go around the gasket all weird. But if we cut out the inside close enough, um, you kind of need this, this ramp. So it kind of builds up and spits out that way. And then if I leave a little bit more on this side, metal, I'm going to be able to cut it, drill it kind of afterwards. And so I can just put probably just a pipe fitting on that side. And in the very last plate, so we'll build it up, build it up, build it up, probably three plates. And the very last plate will have a smaller hole that needs to be about the, uh, the dam diameter of the inside of this. So that's where it sucks in and it pushes out and blows around. Okay, we got four of these all lined up. Each one's quarter inch. It'll make up my one inch that I need. Um, three of them should just be cut out just the inside just like this. The fourth one should just be the suction hole. So it's just this hole in the middle. I still just sketched it out so I can take measurements and find the center. Um, I'm gonna do it about an inch and a half just because that's the biggest annular cutter I have on my mag drill. So let's cut it. I could have done that with a plasma cutter, but it would have never been as pretty, and then I wouldn't have this cool bird's nest. So I got those matched up, 
thinking about just welding all three of these together before I unclamp them, but I need a minute to think about it. So those all line up in get good in there. And then there's my top plate right there. Now this protrudes a little bit, and I knew that it was. And so I have two thoughts. Um, one, I could go an extra layer deep, but then if I went one extra layer deep, I would have a weird void because these are kind of cut at an angle because that's the way it's conical that's how it matched up inside there so what i think i'm going to do on the inside of here is just take a four and a half inch grinding disc and kind of dish this out so it kind of matches that but then also just trim off the tops of these just a little bit So you can see it's dished out now. It doesn't match the pump perfectly. And I do need to trim the pump fins just a little bit, about an eighth an inch off the top. So I'm gonna trim those. Okay, it's all pretty much assembled. I got all those layers on there, you can see. And the impeller is just barely touching in a couple spots. But I don't have a gasket or anything else in there between the layers, because I'll probably still use this gasket that it that came with it so that'll space it off probably enough to make it if not I'll sand it but now I have to I've got all the holes lined up I didn't want to pre-drill the holes because they move so now I can go through the plate and everything else all in one go my holes should be lined up good enough that's where the fluid goes in but we have nowhere for the fluid to go out so that's where this comes in so what I'm thinking about is cutting through at least two of these layers. I might just plasma cut a hole. And then taking this, um, I do have 90s and stuff out in my plumbing scrap stuff, but I think this uh, 45 would lend itself a little bit of a more gradual flow. So if I cut that off kind of in an angle, cut a hole, play around with that for a minute, and then just weld this directly onto there some somewhere somehow so this is where I ended up I took that bottom plate off and I was able just to slice through the uh, two layers and just pop that piece out and I kind of smoothed this out so it flows a little bit better we'll put it right there. so it flows out of here and then it'll flow down into this pipe so this goes like that and then this goes like that and I can just weld this all the way around to all these pieces. We've got it welded on the top and then we have this fish mouth here. I just cut a scrap piece of quarter inch. And we'll just weld that just like that. Doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be functional. So that's all welded on and I welded around all the sides. Tried a couple different techniques just to seal it all in and I put a weld bead just to ride around there. Um, I took the, uh, the carbide burr and kind of ground that down a little bit too so it flows in through there better. Looks good. Now you're asking, how do we turn this into a uh, drill powered? And we just take a socket and we just weld it to the top. And then we can use the myriad of different attachments and any length that we want to make this drill powered. We can make it five feet if we really wanted to. Um, so drilled a couple little notches around the side just so if any fluid fills in there, it also drains out just so that doesn't just pack full of fluid. If you watch the video on the paint stirrer shaker, I just want to say, I no longer put the rag in.
because I didn't weld all those layers in there, I don't really want moisture. I really soaked in the paint and really heavy in there, so it flowed in those cracks. But I also just barely took some number one, which is a hardening gasket sealant, and just smeared it a thin layer around the inside, and that sets rock hard. And then I took some number two, which is a non-hardening and stays kind of like a tar. I just attach my gasket up here. And now we should be able to take the pump, set it on there where it lines up. It's not interfering. I should be able to just bolt it, bolt it home. With a bunch of random bolts. It'll probably be too long, too short. Just whatever we have on hand. There we go. It's all done. Ready to go. Um, there's a couple of things I did on here that you may ask questions about. These little wings. I left those on there for a reason. I don't mind. I might cut them off, but theoretically right now I want them to agitate the whole water. Generally when I've used a sump pump on stuff, you know, the debris settles down and never gets sucked up because this can't do 100% evacuation. But if this is agitating the entire mixture, it will also help suspend all the junk and evacuate you know 98 percent of it so that's that weep holes all these little water pumps have uh weep holes on them you can see this one has two the other one had two as well what i did was just put some atf down in each one well they they're linked together and then i just took some rtv and sealed them up you can you can kind of see just plug them up so let's see if i can show you guys the clearance in there some of them almost just barely touch but some of them are maybe about a sixteenth of an inch away in some parts of the fin and that's what you want as tight as clearance as possible um, a pump like this which is reversed the clearance is actually down here and you can see they have about a sixteenth of an inch um, this pump would have actually probably been easier to use um, and this being brand new but um, the, the impeller was smaller so I wanted to choose the other one now your question is is Wait, okay, but where do I get a free, you know, a free one of these? Well, every single front wheel drive car that has a timing belt run water pump, generally the water pump, working or not, generally it's working, is replaced with every timing belt change. So they take out good water pumps just to change out the, um, just to change out when you change out the timing belt. So they take them out and just throw them away. But other than that, I think this one is like about $20 uh, brand new from Amazon. And this style right here was, I think, roughly $14 shipped to your door. But we're going to be able to take any size extension and extend it on. Um, I thought about actually putting a pipe on here because I'll always use, a, you know, a set extension on here. Um, probably of at least about a foot or so. But then it would be a big tall awkward thing so this makes it as compact as possible and we're able just to take any impactor drill spin it up and just three quarter inch mpt is what i fit it for and so we can just take that screw it in put some pvc in go out drop it in a bucket and test it out let's go do it let's get the dog ready ginger ginger you ready come on let's go out and play with this this spits out water you're gonna be excited Okay, ginger is ready. So we have about a six foot pipe here. So one of the things with pumps is how tall, how high they will pump and what volume. So six feet high. We're just going to use a small little impact because it spins pretty fast. And ready? Five gallons. Shoot it. That's it. So now we'll try it with the shorter pipe and that'll give it a uh, more comparable time to what you'd see in store-bought stuff, I guess. They would probably have zero pipe. Okay, five gallons, time, ready?
Thanks for watching, guys.